again, everybody. Today, uh, I'm going to show you what I've kind of come up with here. Uh, the problem with these diesel heaters. Now, here is the little controller. These little controllers, uh, they have what seems to be a thermostat control on them. And it really doesn't work that great for a thermostat um, because all it does with with any of these heaters that I've had, with whatever controller that I've had so far, all it does is it slows down the heater, but it is still putting out heat this whole time. The heater continues to just pour heat into your living area and of course that gets that ends up getting hot unless it's a really really cold day and then in that case when it starts getting hot you just have to turn the heater off manually you have to get up turn it off it won't shut itself all the way down manually because it just it, it's just not going to do it and if it were to shut itself down manually it wouldn't start itself back up when the room got colder so I was thinking what it needs is a regular household thermostat. Um, and what I've done, and what I'm going to show you how to do, is I have taken a regular, this is just a regular Honeywell thermostat. I have put this type of thermostat on the diesel heater. Now I still have the regular control right here. Because you want to still, even with the other um, thermostat, there are times that you want to monitor what your heater is doing. And you can actually turn it up and down with this. You can increase the power if it's not keeping up or whatever. Because when this heater kicks on, it kicks on about on medium. Um, so if medium is plenty to keep your house warm or your vehicle or whatever, this would work in anything. It just runs off 12 volts. So it would work in an RV or a house or wherever. You just have to have a 12 volt source. And what I'm using right now actually is a wall wart or a transformer that runs the thermostat. And of course the thermostat itself has a battery in it. So what will you need to do this? What you'll need, you'll need a thermostat. Any thermostat will do that that would normally run a regular household um, furnace. Um, for one like this, see it gets its power from batteries. So that's why I say this would be good for use like in a van or a motorhome. Or you could even stick this in a tent if you wanted to. If you were staying a night in a tent, if you could hang this on the wall at a appropriate like about halfway up the wall or something like that you could hang this thermostat up and use it and you could if you had one of those all-in-one heaters leave the whole heater outside including the control just set it up to where it just runs on high and which it will never reach of course the temperature because it's outside and put this thermostat inside so you're using this thermostat A relay now this one actually this is just kind of an example this is actually the wrong one see how it's got the connections on the back you see the one that's missing right in the middle this has four connections you need the one with the five connections but this is just a just to, to let you know what to get I just had one and the last thing that you will need is the remote that came with your heater because we're going to use the remote itself to turn the heater on and off. We're going to use the on and off functions on the remote. Along with the relay and the thermostat. And that's it. Well, you'll need a power supply. Like if you're in a vehicle, you could use a cigarette lighter plug that would plug directly into your 12-volt port anywhere on the vehicle. You could run it straight to the battery, of course, with a fuse. Um, it's not going to pull very much at all. It's just the only thing it's really running is this relay. 
you can see it behind me here. I've got it all set up. And I've actually tried it out, and it works. I wanted to show you what all you needed to do it. Now let's take a, close, a closer look at the unit itself. Okay, so you can see you can clean all this up. In fact, if you had a sheetrock wall, as far as that goes, it's just 12 volts right here. It will not shock you, and it's very low amperage. It's just the power supply for this right now is this little plug right here. So you don't really have any high power or anything. It's like 12 volts DC, and it's very low amperage. So if you put this in your sheetrock wall, I can't do that. I've got boards up here. And it really doesn't bother me. I will probably make some kind of a box to put it all in. But if you just wanted nothing but the thermostat on the wall, um, and also in a van, you could hide it behind the wall too. Um, you, you can just put the thermostat like that. You notice I have a little controller hanging down so you can still use it to set the temperature up and down. It's just, it's not mounted. It's just hanging there by the wires. Uh, and yes, there's wires coming out of it. All right, so this is the thermostat itself that works my diesel heater. And in order to turn it on and off, you know, you have your, it's already on heat right now. See the little switch there. And if you watch, I have the temperature set at 71 there. We'll just go through and, and we'll let it do its thing here. If you watch, when I get up to, what's it set? Let's see, let's set it for 77. Okay, now when it goes back to the regular mode, you can see the light just came on on the remote. I don't know if you can hear it, but the heater just turned on. And see, this remote will time out. It will only, see, the, the, the relay is still actually kicked on. Uh, but the remote only powers on for 10 seconds and then shuts itself back off. And you can see over here, uh, make it brighter, you can see the heater is running. It's doing its startup cycle. You can see the little, you can't hardly see nothing for the glare. Okay, there we go. You can see the little glow plug is starting in the fan. It just now came on. It This heater was off. It was off and, uh, was not running. So now, now that we have the temperature set, it's 73 in here, so we'll set it for 74. Now that the temperature is set above the temperature that's in here, the heater is running. And you can adjust, if you wanted to, you could adjust it up and down with the plus and minus. Or, of course, you can come over here and you can turn it all the way up. Now, with this style, with the one with the blue writing, this type of controller, uh, this one doesn't remember what you had it set on last. So, when it comes back on, it's going to come on on right there. It's going to come on on three. So um, on heat three, it's not even going to come on with a temperature. So I need to figure out a way to keep these settings in here. I don't know how really yet to do it. I'm not super familiar with this controller yet, but now you can see it's all running. You can hear it and it is putting out some heat right now. Feeling pretty good. So, the heater is running and it's heating. And this is set, of course, at 74. That's feeling really good. Now, instead of letting it get up to temperature, which it will, but instead of letting it get up to temperature, we'll go ahead and we will act like it got up to temperature. We'll just take the set temperature down to 72. Okay, now it's saying heater off. Okay, you can see the light come back on. Right now it's sending the signal and it dimmed back out. There we go. 
Okay, you can see that it's uh, it's going off. Turn the glow plug back on, doing its shutdown cycle and all that. And it will do that over and over again to keep your house at a set temperature so you don't have to burn up because the heater's running all night. And also, it running all night, it does use more fuel, of course, because it's running all night. Okay, so how did I do this? Now, in the thermostat itself, you can see the only wires we actually have hooked up are the R and W. I don't know if that I don't know if you can make that out, but it's the R and the W. This is the R, and actually the R and the RC are connected with the jumper already. And then over here is the W. It just skips. That one says not used. And then the W. That's the only two connections you have to actually make inside of the thermostat. You see the thermostat has its own battery. So it even stays on when it's taken off of the wall. I have the switch over, this switch over on gas or oil. And I have the fan on auto. And of course the heat, you can turn the heater on and off. You can keep your heater from from coming on and off by switching that to off. You also can run power from, so you've got a little plug right here. You could also, if you wanted to, because this is a 12 volt battery, let's say you got the controller, you don't have the battery. I have the battery in this one, but let's say you didn't have the battery in here. You could run 12 volt from this down into your controller and just solder on to the ends of the where the battery goes in, the positive and negative. So then you wouldn't even have to have a battery in there. But the way this is hooked up, this wire, the, let's see, the black wire from this comes up and goes around behind here and in, and it connects to either one, it doesn't matter which one, the W or the R. Then this comes back out and goes back up here to this side connection, which is your coil. This one comes up. It can be either the priority does not matter here. It's just turning that coil of wire on and off to pull that little electromagnet in. But the other side of this goes up to the other side of your coil. So that way all you're doing is you're using the thermostat to turn the relay on and off. The relay is what tells the remote what to do. These wires, I did not need the red one. I didn't know that before, but uh, you don't need the red one. I'll, I'll put up a, a, a picture of the inside of the remote, the way that I have it wired up. Um, okay, so this one is a picture of the remote itself that has been disassembled and that's in its original form you can see the contacts on either side of the on and off switches then this one actually shows the wires hooked in um, the green and the white and the black are all you really needed you really didn't need the red wire uh, the green and the white are actually the triggers for those two switches, and the black actually uh, just solders on to the side of... You could put a wire in the place of the black or the red. They actually are the same thing. So I really didn't even need to put the red one in there. I could have put the black one on either side on the outside. And then... The green one is for the off and the white one is for the on. So when you connect the white to the black, it will turn the heater on. When you connect the green to the black, it will turn the heater off. Uh, like I said, the red is not needed. I didn't know that before. But okay, the next picture shows it when I have it put back into the case and I put some glue. You can't really see the glue in there but I put some glue on the wires to hold them in place to keep it from vibrating loose. Um, you can still use these buttons. I didn't glue the buttons themselves. I just glued where the wire was so that it would hold it because moving back and forth it could break. 
All right, and then here is the remote all reassembled uh, in the state that it is right now. Okay, so the black wire that is hooked to the outside, it doesn't matter what color you use. I'm just saying the black wire because that's what I used. But the black wire is hooked to the one, the terminal that goes this way. This is your, the terminal number 30, looks like, on the relay. And then this is pretty standard relay. Then the white, which is your on wire, it comes up and it goes to the outer one, which is your 87 uh, connection here. Then the green one comes up and it goes to the 87A. Uh, this is very simple to do. It's, it's not complicated at all. The hardest part is soldering those little tiny wires. That's the part I had the hardest time with. <laughs> And then all you have to do, get it mounted up to your wall, and uh, you can turn your heater on and off using your thermostat. Really, this could be hidden in behind the wall or in a box or whatever. You don't really even need this out. I just, one reason I wanted this out is because I wanted to see the little LED come on whenever I turn the heater on. But anyway, all we got to do is put everything back together and our thermostat is ready to go. Okay, so my heater's running right now. Got it all turned on and uh, that's going to be what's going to maintain our heat for today. I'm just trying it out. One thing I have noticed is running the diesel heater, actually running it wide open all night, which uh, it did get kind of hot in here, but uh, I wanted to see how much fuel it would use. It used about half of that tank. I think it's about a two-gallon tank or something like that. Actually, for about, well, 12, 12 or 14 hours. I can't remember exactly. Let's say let's say 12 hours. Running wide open, it used about a half a tank, about a gallon. Um, that's not bad. Um, I kind of wish I would have had this thermostat hooked up last night because that would have kept us from burning up. <laughs> But when I woke up this morning, I looked at all the glass, and the glass was clear. Every morning when I wake up with the gas heat, the nat natural gas heat, we get a lot of condensation out of it. And on the glass, there is condensation, and you can't hardly even see outside in the mornings a lot of times without wiping the window off. So... That's one thing about the diesel heat that I am liking is the nice dry heat that it puts out. Um, but <laughs> I guess that's going to be about it for my little video. This is the uh, thermostat that I've built for the diesel heater. And it seems like it works really well. I'll let you know if there's any problems in the future with it. And we will remedy those. But anyway. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one.